Hello everyone, Christina Werner here with another video for assignmentsystamp.com. Today I'm using the Pink Fresh Stamp Timber Stamp Set and Stencil Set to create a really fun card. So this is the stamp set, it's called Artistic Foliage, and here are the stencils that match it. You could definitely use the stamp set on its own, but this stencil set, mm, you can't really use it without the stamps because it, well, I mean, it does have some leaves. Yeah, I guess you could make it look like some tumbling leaves in the wind, but the only way you're gonna get the stem and all the little lines connecting the leaves is with the stamp set. So I wanted to create a card where I had those leaves kind of going all over a background and I wanted to stamp the smaller stem separately from the larger stem. So I'm going to perform some stamp surgery. I know you can all hear the stamp screaming in your head, but believe me, it is perfectly fine. I'm just using some scissors to cut apart these two images. And there's plenty of room around each one. It's very generously spaced. So I had no issue cutting those apart. And if I ever want to stamp them uh, back together, I can always mount them on my Misty or on an acrylic block back together. Since I'm going to be stamping my leaf images all over this card, I decided to use a sticky mat. This is a sticky mat from uh, My Sweet Petunia or a Misty sticky mat. And the first thing I'm doing is stamping my greeting. I'm stamping the greeting first because then I can have all of those leaves go around it. So I'm going to use a brown shade of ink. It's the color Mocha. And I've picked out some very fall or um, kind of autumn cozy colors. And one of the colors I chose was brown. So I decided to go ahead and just use this mocha shade for the greeting. And then I started to stamp the leaves um, all around the greeting itself. I'm using the color flannel. And I wanted just a really light pale ink because I'm actually going to be stenciling on the color for the leaves. And then I'm going to re-stamp over the top and gold emboss. So this particular stamping of this kind of light gray ink, it actually won't show very much on the final card. So I moved that large leaf image all around my greeting. I um, eventually moved my cardstock over so I could have a bit more space to stamp on that one side. And then I used the smaller leaf image to fill in some of those gaps. So now I've got the stencil set. There are two stencils. The first stencil has the solid leaves and that's the one you want to use first. So I'm placing it directly down over my card design and then I'm going to mask off that second leaf area, the smaller stem of leaves. Remember, I stamped them separately, so I need to make sure that I stencil them separately as well. I'm using five different colors of ink, latte, sherbet, sage, royal, and mocha. And I'm just going to be blending these in various different um, orders of ink. I'm going to uh, change it up as I, as I move my stencil around and continue stenciling over top. So I did mask off that smaller um, little a stem. So I only really need to worry about stenciling on the larger stem of leaves for this particular part. Now, after each one was done, I peeled it up from my mat and that sticky mat came in clutch for all of this, by the way, I cleaned my stencil with a little spritz of alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and then wiped it off with a cloth. That's a really fast way to clean your stencils because any moisture that's left behind on the stencil from the alcohol, the rubbing alcohol, will dry very quickly because it is alcohol. So um, it's just a great way if you're going to be changing colors quite a bit on a stencil, it's a really fast way to switch those around. Okay, so after I finished with the larger stem of leaves, then I used the smaller stem and I masked off the larger one so I wouldn't have any areas where I accidentally inked over. And then I stenciled on the ink for the smaller stems. So after I finished the smaller stems background color, um, then I'm actually going to swap out this stencil and I'm going to go to the stencil number two, which is the detail for these leaves. And it's going to add just a little bit of a dark shape in the center of the different leaves. 
So I'm getting that position just over the top. And when you use this, just a tip for lining it up, look for where the, the, the corners of the leaves that meet a stem, you want those corners to line up with this second stencil. So the darker areas are coming to a point at the very bottom of each leaf. And I just went over those detail areas with the same colors, tried to get a little bit more of an intense color. I did that for the larger stem of leaves and also the smaller stem of leaves. And these images, and these images were spaced apart enough that I didn't need to mask any of them off. I was just able to use the stencil as is and just kind of move it around my project. After I had the details stenciled on, I then removed my card design from that sticky mat and I came around with the color mocha on a larger blending brush and just inked up the edges. I thought this would look really, really nice, especially since I'll be doing some gold embossing powder over those leaves and stems. I thought having a darker shade underneath would really make that gold pop. Now I said embossing powder, and if you are an experienced stamper, you might be thinking, oh, that ink is not dry. And you are correct. The ink that I've just laid down was still pretty wet and juicy. So I used my heat tool to speed along that drying process. And before I move on to stamping the outer line work of the stem of leaves, I wanted to test my cardstock to make sure that it was completely dry. So I'm gonna just sprinkle on that embossing powder. This is gilded embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. And then just tap it off and make sure it's not sticking to areas where I don't want it. Now this first test, I was very glad I did it because it was sticking to those areas. So I wiped off the powder with a dry brush Heat set it again, tried to speed up those areas that were a little bit more moist and wanted to get, the, get it completely dry. I applied more anti-static powder and then tested a second time. And this time it worked beautifully. That powder slid right off. So now I'm going to be stamping each one of these images with the original stamp that I used when I stamped it. So I'm trying to line it up right over that. And I realized pretty quickly that I wasn't going to be able to line it up perfectly. So as I stamp each one of these outlined images, it's going to be just slightly off. So I'm going to lean into that look and I'm not gonna worry about getting it precisely placed. I'm just going to go ahead and stamp right over the top, apply some of that gilded embossing powder and then heat set it with my heat tool. And you can see that it has sort of like an offset, much more free form look when it's done this way. And I think it really lends itself to the style of the leaves because those leaves are very whimsical and very free form. So having the detail kind of offset from that coloring looks pretty nice. So I, uh, when I was doing all this stamping, I used um, just a clear piece, piece of plastic that was from, it was actually the, the protective plastic piece from the sticky mat. I used that over top of my project, placed the stamp over top, and then I was able to kind of move that stamp around without it kind of touching the surface of my project. That was a great way to get everything stamped and not possibly have, you know, a little bit of Versamark going in areas where I don't want it. After I had all my embossing done, I used a little bit of scrap cardstock to protect that greeting. And then I uh, sprinkled some water onto my project. Now I have seen this, I think I saw it many years ago, but I've never tried it myself, but heat embossing with water. I wanted to have some kind of like a splatter look over top of this project. And I wanted it, the splatter to be in gold, but I wanted the gold to match all of that embossing I'd already done. So I decided to just sprinkle on water and then, uh, and then put some embossing powder on and then heat set it. And it seemed to work really, really well. Some things to note about using water for heat embossing though, it does take a little bit longer to melt because the paper underneath is very wet as opposed to if you just put Versamark down. So I wanted to add some even more gold around the edges of my project. So I just ran a Versamark ink pad right along the edges and then dipped each edge into that embossing powder. 
It's going to be a very subtle border, and I think it looks really nice. It blends into that kind of gold, um, almost like an ornate overlay that we have over all of the leaves. I used my heat tool to heat set all of that gold embossing powder around the outside edge. And that's pretty much going to finish up the card design. Um, so I'm going to adhere it to a card front. I've got some Tombow Extreme Adhesive, and I put that down onto a prepared folded card front. My project was a little bit short compared to my card front, so I used a T-square ruler and a craft knife just to even that up so it was nice and perfect. Cut off that edge with my scissors. And you'll notice I have a little blue smudge right below the word every day. So I used a sand eraser to just very gently sand away a little bit of that paper. And that softened that blue shade. And then I have my finished card. So this stamp set and stencil set are available over at simusstamp.com. And just like the other stamp temper collaborations with the different stamp companies, these products will not be restocked. They're limited edition. So if you would love to try out these stamps and the stencil, make sure you go over to simusstamp.com and pick those up before they sell out. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.